Thanks for tuning in. You're watching Arirang News Break. I'm Han Daeun in Seoul. We start at the National Assembly. The regular session got off to what might be called a productive start this afternoon. Rival parties are getting ready to vote on the long delayed supplementary budget worth nearly 10 billion US dollars aimed at breathing new life into Korea's stagnant economy. Let's get further details from our Ji Myung Gil at the parliament. Myung Gil, fill us in. Hello, town. The plenary session is ongoing as we speak. Lawmakers held an opening ceremony just an hour ago to mark the launch of the 20th National Assembly's first 100-day regular session. Assembly Speaker Chong se addressed the legislature from the floor, urging the parties to move away from confrontational and dysfunctional politics and work together to make the assembly more productive. They will also soon vote on the $9.8 billion extra budget bill. In marathon talks late last night and this morning, the parties agreed to allocate more funds to educational programs and facilities and help those who are more socially vulnerable or less self-sufficient. And aside from today's vote on the extra budget, Myung-gil, uh, this is a brand new parliament. Were there any promises by legislators on how they plan to carry on during this 100-day regular session? Yes, Town, the three major parties promised to take particular care to ensure that the National Assembly works smoothly, as lawmakers must tackle quite a number of policy-related matters. The party leaders warned in unison that the assembly cannot afford any more political gridlock and that what they called all politics of confrontation should not stall the body's legislative agenda. This month and through October, Palma will conduct audits of agencies involved in core diplomatic, security, social and economic issues and plan to finalize next year's budget by December 2nd. Back to you, Dan. Thank you, myung -gil, for tracking those developments. Keep us posted. Hanjin Shipping, once Korea's biggest shipping company, filed for court receivership on Wednesday afternoon, and the repercussions are already being felt around the world. Hanjin's imminent collapse is also affecting world trade. Hwang Ho-jun reports. Less than 24 hours since the trade giant of Korea filed for bankruptcy protection, and the news has shocked the global trade market. Ports around the world, including those in China, Spain, and the U.S., have denied access to Hanjin ships over fears that Hanjin's creditors could seize the cargo vessels before they docked, not to mention the ships potentially not being able to pay their fees. In fact, a smaller-sized Hanjin vessel, the Hanjin Rome, was seized by a creditor in Singapore late on Monday. Experts say more docks around the world will follow suit. The Wall Street Journal reported that U.S. exporters are jostling to rebook containers with other carriers to reload their cargoes, ahead of the retail boom that accompanies Thanksgiving, Hanukkah and Christmas. Hanjin Shipping has halted its operations, and with global market share of 2.9 percent, the drop in tonnage will likely lead to skyrocketing costs. A Korean court will determine as early this week whether Hanjin should be liquidated or given a chance to restructure and possibly survive. Hwang Ho-jun, Arirang News. The Hanjin crisis foreshadows quite a big chaos on the movements of global shipments. But going back to August, Korea's exports have finally made a turnaround, uh, putting an end to a record 19 straight months of decline. The trade ministry says the country's outbound shipments rose 2.6 percent in August from a year earlier to 40.1 billion U.S. dollars. The gain comes on the back of strength in Korea's key export items, such as semiconductors and petrochemical goods, as well as additional working days in August. Imports also rose 0.1 percent on-year to $34.8 billion, marking the first rise in nearly two years. That means a trade surplus of $5.3 billion, extending the surplus streak for a 55th straight month. While the ministry expects improvements in export conditions in the latter half of the year, downside risks remain, such as a possible U.S. rate hike and a pro long strike in Korea's auto industry. The disgraced president of Brazil, Dilma Rousseff, has been impeached by the country's Senate. Brazilian senators voted overwhelmingly in favor of ousting her from office. Park jong ong has the latest. The Senate vote immediately removed Brazil's first female president from office. 
Brazilian senators voted 61 to 20 to dismiss Dilma Rousseff, who was suspended back in May. Her vice president, Michel Temer, will serve as interim president until an election is held in 2018. Rousseff was impeached on charges of illegally tampering with the budget two years ago to hide a growing deficit in order to win re-election. The Senate vote marks the culmination of a controversial impeachment process that has dragged on for months. Even though the Senate's decision is a major blow for Rousseff, it may not mark the end of her political career. That's because a motion to bar her from holding any public office for the next eight years failed to pass. In response to the Senate vote, Rousseff said that there was no constitutional justification for the impeachment. She called the entire affair a coup against her and her leftist party, pledging to fight back. Rousseff becomes just the second Brazilian leader in history to be dismissed from office. In 1992, Fernando Collor de Mello resigned before a vote in his impeachment trial for corruption. Park Jong-hong, Arirang News. That's all for now. Stay tuned for more top stories here on Arirang. Thank you for watching. Thank you.